Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to have you here to talk about the visualization and design tools available in House Pro and how designers are using them to win more jobs and improve their workflow. My name is Katie Congress, and I'm on the product marketing team at House. I'm here today joined with my colleagues, Cameron and Stefan. Cameron, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Hey, everybody. How's it going? My name is Cameron. I am a client success manager here. So working with all of our professionals that are on the program day in and day out, really boots on the ground with the software. So happy to walk through some stuff with you guys today. Hi, everybody. My name is Stefan Rabimov. I lead content marketing for House Pro. We're always happy to share with you latest insights on business and client management techniques and other tutorials. So come check us out. Great. So on the agenda for today, we're going to go through our room scanning tool, which you can now use with LiDAR technology. And then we're going to talk about the 3D floor planner and how useful that is throughout the sales and design process, along with the life-size walkthrough, which is our augmented reality feature. Then we'll cover the product clipper and mood boards and how designers are using both of those in their workflow. And our newest feature, the room planner. We'll wrap up with some Q&A. So to get us started, Cameron is going to walk us through the room scanner with LiDAR functionality that we have. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. So let's jump right into it then. So with LiDAR here, this is currently only available on the latest version of iPhones. So do keep that in mind. LiDAR is the latest and greatest for scanning capabilities, specifically for our 3D floor plans it automatically captures room measurements and detects you know, walls, furniture uh, of that nature, and really helps get, again, measurements extremely accurate. This is, of course, going to make it so that you don't have to go back on site to get additional measurements, and you can easily upload it straight to your floor plan. So here's actually a testimonial that we have from one of our professionals that has been using LiDAR, so it's always great to see. She said, I used the House Pro room scanner with LiDAR. It was mind blowing. We are promoting to our clients that we use the most advanced technology here. And this is a highlight. Thank you so much for that amazing review. So next we'll go into just a quick demo for you guys. Experience the combined power of Apple's innovative room plan API and House Pro's immersive 3D floor planner. To get started, ensure the desired room is well lit. Then scan away at a steady pace, gently moving your iPad or iPhone Pro up and down to capture every angle. Watch while accurate lightning fast floor plans realize before your eyes and tagged objects automatically convert into furniture pieces. Tune in to our following videos to discover how to customize designs on your computer and hide furniture within a room. So once you scan your room and create a floor plan, you can go into the 3D floor planner on your desktop to edit it. Or if you prefer, you can start from scratch right on the desktop. One question that we do often get is whether you can upload existing floor plans, and that is a capability that we're working on soon that should be released shortly. So the 3D floor planner is one of the most popular tools that we have for designers. It's a really fast way to get conceptual and schematic designs in front of your clients with high quality 2D and 3D visuals versus some of the more sophisticated CAD software. So you can get to a shareable design much faster in House Pro than in some of the traditional desktop CAD software. Using the 3D floor planner before you even close the sale is a great way to help your prospects understand your vision and see the before and after scenario. Some of our clients will give their clients a 3D walkthrough of multiple options before they do the proposal and sign a contract, so it will help them save time later on. It's also a great way to help your clients visualize their projects and then align together on your design vision. So we know that homeowners often have trouble visualizing the end state of their project. So having a 3D floor plan that you can look at together is a great way to help them get to that point of visualization. And to that point, it can also really help speed up decision making and final approvals and prevent misunderstanding down the road. So being able to share a 3D floor plan takes some of the guesswork out of what you're proposing to the client and what they're agreeing to. So you can all go through and get feedback together and align on your final vision. And of course, creating a 3D floor plan is a really great way to differentiate your business with professional tools, since we know that not all home professionals are creating these plans. And as virtual reality and augmented reality are becoming even more popular, homeowners are starting to expect this from the professionals that they're working with. 
So by using the 3D tools throughout your design process, you'll really be able to differentiate yourself in the mind of homeowners. As I mentioned, the 3D floor planner can come in handy throughout your entire sales and design process. So it's really great to have in the pre-sales workflow. You can create a 3D floor plan to include with your proposal to help bring the vision to life and sell in that before and after scenario before you've even signed the contract. And both the 3D floor planner and that room scanner that Cameron walked through are great tools to help you plan and design the space and then ultimately finalize your design. And as a last step in your process, having that agreed upon 3D floor plan is a really great way to get client approval on the overall design. So homeowners know what they're signing off on, and this will prevent any misunderstandings down the road to help everyone stay happy. And here's a quote from Victoria Ray from Feather Lane Design, and she loves using the floor planner because it's so easy to use. So it can take a third of the time to create a concept and put together a layout versus some other tools. And so for her business, that means they can go from measurement to floor plan really quickly and often has something to share with their clients that same day. And so now Cameron will give us a demo of how this works in action. Yes, thank you so much. Cool. So I'm definitely looking forward to running through this all with you. So let's just talk about quickly, how do we get started? So when we are inside of House Pro here, what you'll want to do is click into design. And then we have a section dedicated to 3D floor plans. From here, you'll be able to see all the 3D floor plans that you've created thus far. But let's actually start with one fresh today. So I'm going to click add a floor plan right here. And I just want to run through some of the basics with you guys. I think that the initial setup is actually the thing that is kind of the most important to cover. Just familiarizing ourselves with the tools will really help you move things along uh, really quickly. So up here at the top right now, we are on the select tool. So anytime you are on the select tool and you bring your mouse over something, whether it's a wall, whether it's a floor, a piece of furniture that you've added, if you click onto that the right-hand panel will open up and give more options on whatever you have selected. Next tool here is going to be drawing walls. So if we're on the draw wall, which we'll use here in just a minute, we'll be able to add in additional walls. This tool up here is called measurements. So you'll be able to outline measurements from point to point. We'll be able to select our unit. So right now we are in meters uh, as well as feet. Next one here is zoom to center, which will get really important as you get expansive uh, floor plans running. You might need to just zoom out and have everything centered. But of course, you might also need to zoom in uh, occasionally as well as zoom out. Cool. So again, like I mentioned, getting started, um, this is kind of the, the biggest uh, thing to kind of grasp and understand. We really need to set the parameter here. After that, we can just start adding in things relatively easily. So right now, we are just left with an empty square, about 20 feet here by 12. And if we want to extend these walls, there's a couple of different ways that we can do it. Actually, let me get back over here to my select tool. So one of the ways that we can do this is I can click on the wall that I want, and I can actually start dragging it outward. So you'll see up at the top here, we went from about 20 feet in length to now we're at 26. Another way to do that same step here is actually clicking on the wall that we want to move. And now that it's selected here, we can actually adjust the size to get an accurate uh, measurement. So if I know that this wall here is exactly 25 feet, zero inches, if I go ahead and click enter here, it will actually set up that measurement for us. And it sent it out to both directions equally because this one was selected. One important thing to kind of note as well is there is a different measurement between the inner wall as well as the outer wall. So you want to make sure you have which wall side you're, you're making that proper 25 feet. So cool. We have 25 feet here. Um, we might want to adjust this wall as well. So let's just say that this one is going to be 18 feet and I want it to go downward. I can click that arrow here. And this is a perfect time to use that zoom to center button so we can get back out and see everything here. So awesome, we have a little bit of the parameters set up at the moment. I can close out of this tab right here. What we can do from there is we can draw in walls if we are looking to separate this out. So right now, if I go ahead and left click, it'll start the action here. And as I move my mouse downward here, if I'm following the red line, it's gonna make a perfectly even straight wall for me. But of course, 
I can venture off that and have this be angled in any regard. And the moment I left click again, it'll actually complete that action here. I'm gonna go back to the select tool. And if we wanna select that wall again, just because it's not nine feet and six inches, it's actually 10 feet on the dot. We can go ahead and do that, make sure I apply it just to the downside as well. It's awesome, we have a perfect 10 foot wall in here. So we're building out our parameters. We've got walls input in here, but there are other structural elements that we may want to add. So right now we have doors, we have windows, staircases, wall partitions, indoor fireplaces, as well as wall openings. And this is again, all structures. After we've added some structures, we'll be able to talk a little bit about the generic products here as well. So cool structures. If we click down into doors, you're gonna see there's so many different door options available here. So find the one that matches up best with what door you're looking at um, adding here. So if we are just adding a simple interior door, if I click on that, all products that you add are generally gonna add right to the middle of the floor plan here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that we're still on the select tool up here and we'll be able to drag and drop this door to wherever it needs to be. So awesome, I've added that in. We're still on the select tool and the door is selected. So again, this right hand menu is going to be a little bit different. So we can add a little bit of info to this door if we need to change the width or the height of it, or even add some finished colors. So if we wanna add you know, some sort of honey brown color to the door here, we'll be able to see what that looks like in a moment when we go to the dollhouse, but we can also add a finish too. So we'll go ahead and select black. We'll check that out in just a second. So awesome. So we're adding in a door here. We'll close that out, but we might also be needing to add some windows and again, other structural elements. So tons of window options to choose from here. Window sliding door two, uh, we're going with that one and we can add this one in. Oops, not on that right here. Let me actually delete that here. So a good time to kind of talk about that. If something was added just by mistake, you can click on it right here and just quickly delete it and we can simply re-add that. So awesome, bring it right up here, it'll magnetize. Now with Windows, this is of course a floating structure, so there's an additional option right here, distance from the floor. So if we need to bring that height up or bring it down a little bit, this is where we'd be able to customize that. Same thing with some of these finish options right here as well. Cool, so let me bring this up here, Windows. So let's just take a look at where we're at so far. If I flip over to this dollhouse view here, it's gonna give us a, a bit of a layout. So I can use my mouse and I can kind of do some circular motions in here uh, just to get a, a bit of a lay of the land and still everything is pretty empty. We still need to add some of our products and we need to liven things up with color as well. So let's jump back over to our floor plan mode over here and let's just quickly talk about some of the products here. So we have two different types of products. We have generic products, and then we have house source products. With generic products, these are going to be, you know, not real products, but kind of fully customizable products. So we can go in here and we can say, hey, I'm looking for living room furniture as an example. And you're gonna see a lot of different generic products in here. So we might have some L sectionals, you know, straight couches as well, some coffee tables, things of this nature. So maybe I'm adding in a love seat right here. If I click in to add it in, we'll give that a second to load up. It's gonna be brought right to the middle and maybe we need to rotate this a little bit here. So I can simply rotate this to the left and I can bring this potentially right over here. And again, if we look at it from the dollhouse view, it is very bland. So if we wanna select a fabric color, we can do that right here. So maybe we wanna give it some sort of cream color. So excellent, I've done that there. So this is what generic products look like, um, but you also might want to source real products from uh, the house marketplace. So we can jump up here and say, hey, uh, maybe we are looking to add a rug. I can utilize the source uh, search feature up here at the top, and there's tons of different real rug options that I can add in. So maybe I'm clicking this one right here. It's brought it to the middle of the room. Let's go back over to the floor plan so we can move it. We can bring it right in front of our couch here. Excellent. So again, let's take a look at what that looks like here in the dollhouse view, it's currently selected. So all looking great so far. We can continue to add in items, coffee table, all these things. 
Um, but we may want to change some of the wall coloring as well too. So if I click on the wall right here, you'll notice that the right hand menu uh, now has the ability for some additional options. And actually I might want to be changing all of the colors in one go. So if we hold down the shift key and then we left click, we're going to be highlighting multiple walls. So you'll see that this select tool is still going with us here. I'm getting all of these walls. We'll do this side of the wall, this right here and right here. So awesome. We have all the walls selected. Let's go ahead and under color here, click select paint color. Now we do have a partnership with both Benjamin Moore as well as uh, Sherwin Williams. So if you know the particular SKU number that you're looking for, or that you're interested in, feel free to type that in up here at the search bar, but we can jump down here and maybe I am looking for ivory, ivory white. So we'll go ahead and click on that. So awesome, things are livening up a bit. Looks like I forgot this wall here. So I'll just go ahead and select that and add that in. Excellent. So we have some wall colors. Things are starting to look a little bit more live. Let's click on the floor because we can also change the flooring. So the floor is now highlighted over here in our menu on the right. We can select flooring. We have a lot of different built-in options here. So we have some wood options, some tile options, as well as carpet options. So maybe we'll jump back over here to the wood, add white pine. Awesome. Again, things are really starting to liven up right now. We have the windows here. We have the doors. We're getting some products in. So we're really feeling the basics here. From here, again, it's really just continuing to add in products, continuing to click on some of those products that are the generic products and giving them colors, uh, finishes, you know, things like that to liven things up. So now that we have a general idea of how to set up our structures and how to start adding in products to the floor plan, I just want to show you a quick example of what a finished floor plan might look like so you can get an idea. So awesome. We'll come over here. Right now we're on the floor plan view, so everything is nice and 2D. But if we flip over to the dollhouse view, we'll see exactly what this looks like. So again, we can kind of move around a little bit here, get a general idea of how everything's looking from the outside, move around. And again, this is where we may want to take advantage of that zoom in tool here so we can get a little bit more granular on things and work our way around, um, move around inside of the room, really feel like we're here. Awesome. And when we are ready, of course, we can actually save it right up here at the top. And we'll have this nice share tool at the top. We can grab a hyperlink and send that out directly to our clients so they can engage with this on their own, whether it's going to be 2D related or dollhouse. But excellent. That is a demo from me here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and kick it over to Safan and we're going to go through life-size walkthroughs next. Life-size walkthroughs, you know, Imagine being able to show clients your new proposed design in their actual space with furnishings and to scale right through your phone or tablet. That's exactly what House Pro Life Size Walkthrough Tool does, where imagination becomes a reality. And of course, in this case, it's augmented reality. Having this AR capability on your everyday device isn't just a competitive advantage. It can help you get a buy-in from clients faster and help prevent design communications and most importantly, costly changes. You just learned about the 3D floor plans. You can transform your 3D floor plans from House Pro into life-size views thanks to this new tool. And using augmented reality and using this feature specifically helps convey Everything from overall sense um, of the designer vision to smaller designer details in a much more uh, authentic way. And in many ways, uh, I believe it eliminates any difficulty in explaining a design to a homeowner and, of course, having multiple rounds of feedback, which can be potentially costly. Seeing designs come to life against a backdrop of their current spaces helps client get to that final approval faster with you. So in many ways, segmented reality is revolutionizing the home design and remodeling industry. And, and I can only imagine how it can benefit your business. And now I'll walk you through an example of life-size walkthrough in action. To begin, click on the triple bar on the top left corner of the app and select 3D floor plans. Next, press the new augmented reality button beside the floor plan you want to display. 
The direction of the green and white dot in this view represents the perspective you'll start with when beginning the walkthrough. Use two fingers to zoom in and out and to change the orientation of the room. Use one finger to change the position of the dot. When you're all set, press next in the top right corner. After scanning the floor of the room, you'll officially begin the life-size walkthrough. Simply point your device around the room you're in and your 3D floor plan will be overlaid into the real world space. If the room isn't quite aligned right, press the reposition button in the bottom right corner of your screen to adjust the position of the floor plan. Using the new House Pro life-size walkthrough, you can reduce confusion about your plans and help your clients get your vision faster, saving time and headaches. Plus, it's easier to learn than you might expect. Try it next time you're using House Pro mobile app so you can feel like an expert on your first client run through. And next we're gonna talk about House Pro Clipper and mood boards. One of the House Pro's popular features that designer love the most. You know, you can skip the copy paste routine for thing and let the House Pro Clipper do the actual heavy lifting. Once you download the House Pro Clipper for your Chrome, it's an extension for your browser. Uh, you can do that from the Chrome store. You can visit any website to start clipping images, descriptions, dimensions, price, SKUs, and many other details that might be important uh, for you to capture. And once you clipped an item, you can add it directly to your room uh, within a project. And we'll talk a little bit later about the room plans. But you can also use House Clipper to create uh, mood boards, tier sheets, proposals, and, and a lot of other things that might be relevant for your client communication. Of course, you decide which details to show clients and which to keep hidden. All the product information is saved in your House Pro product library for use in the future. And so you don't have to clip the same item twice. For example, if you have a popular sofa or a coffee table that a lot of your clients prefer, you can recycle that information uh, throughout your proposals. Also, another way to think about it is if, if you're spending hours pulling the right product images and information to present to your clients, House Pro can absolutely help you here. With our product clipper, part of your browser, you can save time by automating the process of online product sourcing. With House Pro, Pro Product Clipper, you head over to the desired vendor's website and collect all the information that you need for your potential use of that information, for example, in proposals. And um, there's three additional ways to think about House Pro Product Clipper. You can add your markup. So each product that you save, you can add a percentage or maybe enter a total client price. And the tool will automatically help you calculate that markup for you. You can use it to create proposals and mood boards, which I will cover in a minute. And then you get to choose what information you share so you can protect your pricing model. Housepro Clipper is a, a tool that works seamlessly with House Pro mood board. And specifically here, when we talk about mood boards, you know, you want to wow your client and you don't want to take hours to produce it. And of course, What's important is that both Product Clipper and Moodboard are the tools that integrate directly into your design and workflow. So here at House Pro, we design mood boards to fit seamlessly into your proposal and product approval process. So you never have to duplicate the effort. How you ask? Well, House Pro has all the tools you need to build right in. It's all in one software, including mood boards, and they all work together so you can do much more in much less time. So the, for mood boards, it starts with a custom product library that you can create in House Pro. Like I said earlier, you can use a product clipper to do that, to build that out. And no matter where you source your products or product ideas, from online to showrooms to vendors, House Pro Product Clipper and mobile app enable you to quickly add product photos and all the details you ever need into your mood boards. So you want to pull all these products into a professional client proposal. It will only take a click. If you want to send specific products to clients for approval, it will only just take a quick. And when you pull all these products into a mood board, again, with just a click, a House Pro mood boards have all the editing capabilities for you to present your design vision 
in a way that makes best sense for you and your client. From textures to colors to shapes to vision, House from Moodboard is at your disposal. And without further ado, we'll have Cameron uh, walk us through how to use our product Clipper as well as Moonboard. But before we do that, let me share this quote from one of our pros where Asisad says, the product Clipper is a blessing that has made our lives easier. Before House Pro and the Clipper were using spreadsheets, clients couldn't see the items and then they have to click on all those individual links. Now with you can clip items and they will appear directly in your room plans. Like I said, which we will cover later in today's webinar. Uh, over to you, Cameron. Perfect, thank you so much. So let's go ahead and kick it over here. And just as Stefan was mentioning here, House Pro Clipper, important to remember, it is a Chrome exclusive app um, at the moment. So make sure that you've downloaded the, the House Pro Clipper from the Chrome web browser first. So I already have it installed and we have it right up here at the top. So cool, let's run through a demo of clipping one of the products here. So this House Pro Clipper is meant to work on all of the websites out there. So your favorite vendor websites that you typically like to buy products from. But of course, today we're gonna do a demo of a product on House. So uh, we are here into the marketplace section and we'll just jump into the first one here. So awesome, let's just say that this couch is a sofa that we want to add to our product library potentially also add it to a mood board and other tools that we have. We need to get this product off of the House website and into our House Pro backend, our product library. So how do we do that? Well, with the House Pro Clipper installed, anytime you hover over an image here, you're gonna see this leaf icon pop up. And if we click that, it's going to launch that House Pro Clipper extension. Some websites we have have smart sourcing. So House is one of those websites here. And what smart sourcing is, is it's going to scan the website and with all the relevant information that it finds, it will try to add that information in for you over here automatically. But if you wanna clear all of that information, you can click clear all and you can do a manual clip. So I'll go ahead and click the leaf icon right here. And awesome, you'll see that we actually do have the ability to connect up to five images per product. So I'm gonna give a quick pro tip that I think is extremely important here. When you go through to some of the other images here that we have of the product, generally speaking, you're going to find a small little leaf icon for each of the images, but you wanna make sure that you don't click on that and instead you get to the actual full size image that you're interested in. Let's just say it's this one right here and then click the leaf icon again. So awesome. That'll ensure that we are saving the full size image as opposed to the small scale image, which again is really important if we're gonna be bringing this image and using it on other mood boards and things of that nature because we wanna make sure that when we blow it up, it doesn't get blurry. So awesome, we have two images, I'll be fine with that here. We can go ahead and add in a project title. Now, as we're going down the list and adding in some of our info, we have two different ways of going about doing it. We can either highlight some of our info and the moment I let go of the mouse click here, it's gonna say, hey, what did you just highlight there? And if I click product title, it'll go ahead and just add that in automatically. So we can continue to go down the list and just start adding in all of our information by highlighting our various uh, bits of info. Alternatively, we can click on the finger tool right here at the top. And this is essentially just an auto highlighting tool. So as I kind of highlight over anything, it'll just be highlighting. And if I left click here, it's the same exact process. It'll say, hey, what did you just click on? So cool, we can go ahead and click cost. I personally like to highlight everything. Everybody has their own preference. So feel it out on both sides and, and find out what you like the best. Um, but cool, I've went ahead and added in the cost, but we may also need to add in a markup here. So we can do this a couple different ways. We can add in a flat percentage just by typing it in. Alternatively, we can click the calculate markup calculator tool here and we can manually adjust some of these fields. So let's just say we want the client price to be something a little bit more um, pleasing, like $13.99. We can go ahead and just type that in and it'll actually automatically update the markup for us. So that's great. We'll go ahead and click set. 
And then it's just going to be about filling in all the information that we want here on the right hand side. So we have two different options for the description. We have both a client description as well as a, a vendor description. So if you're wanting to ensure that your clients are not, you know, finding this information, go ahead and just, you know, fill in the product description here. You can highlight it and maybe use this as the vendor description, product client description. Maybe go ahead and just type something in custom over here. That way they aren't shopping you. Cool. So maybe we'll go ahead and just type in something very basic and simple here. So I'll actually just use this portion right here. And we'll say that that's the client description. I need to add that in traditional. Excellent. So category here, this is furniture, the vendor. Now, at first, you won't have any vendors here, but as you click create new vendor and add them in, you won't have to continue to add them over and over. They will be saved in your saved vendors list. So go ahead and give the vendor name. And if you have a point person at that company that you generally send purchase orders to, go ahead and fill their info in right here. It'll save some time later on down the line in the software. But since I already have house added to my system, I can just come back here and click um, house from my pre-saved list of vendors. Awesome. Next one here, of course, is all, always optional too. But if we want to save this product, not only to our main product library, but we also want to save it to a specific project, we can do that. So we can search through all of our different projects here. So maybe I'm saving it to Ross's home or even you know one of our other ones. So Ross's refresh and I can save it to the living room as well. So excellent, that'll be there waiting for me in that room as well as in our product library. So cool, we can go ahead and continue to fill in all the info. Uh, we can enter in the manufacturer, the SKU, all of this bits of info you'll be able to find here throughout the product page. So you're gonna get very good at sourcing your products from your different vendor websites. You'll be able to do this you know, within a minute or less um, as you get comfortable with the tool. So maybe we want to come in here and we want to add the dimensions. We can highlight that and say dimensions. Color here, C blue. We can add that in here for finish and color. So awesome. When we feel content with all the info and we're ready to save it, all we have to do is click Save to House Pro right here and it is saved. It's ready for us to add additional products, but if we're not adding more products at the moment, we can just go ahead and close out of the clipper from there. So awesome. So we have a product clipped. So let's move over to the mood boards and talk a little bit about how that kind of works hand in hand with sourcing products. So awesome, we have mood boards here. You have all of your saved mood boards. And of course you have the ability to click add a mood board over here. You can link the mood board to a project um, or you can have it be a standalone. So I'm gonna link it to a project here. I wanna link it to Ross's refresh and we're gonna do a living room, room board here, or mood board rather. So we'll click okay. And we are greeted with an empty canvas. So let's talk a little bit about some of the tools before we start making one here. So up at the top here, we have photos. If you click on that, this will allow you to bring in an image if you have a saved file that is of a product or anything that you haven't clipped. So if you wanna manually upload an image, this is your way to do that here. We also have the ability to bring in 3D floor plans. So if we click on that here and we wanted to bring in one of those floor plans that we are working on, if we click on that, it'll bring it right into our mood board and we can kind of resize it and move it wherever we would like it to be. So we can bring that down into the corner over here. Awesome. Color, again, we have a partnership with both Benjamin Moore as, as well as Sherwin-Williams. So if we want to find a color swatch from one of these companies here, maybe we want to add in Victorian uh, trim, we can click add swatch and we have a nice beautiful color swatch. We can resize that, bring it down here. Maybe we are adding in multiple options for them. So we might be comparing the two. So we can do that, resize that, bring it down here at the bottom. So awesome. Let's continue with our tools here up at the top. So. Next up here is text. So if you want to add in any sort of custom text and have that next to an image, you'll be able to do that here. You can change the different font as well as size, make it bold, italic as well. Cool, next tool here is select. So when you're on select, this will essentially let you click on something and start moving it around. The pan feature is if we are kind of zoomed in and we want to kind of move around the mood board, we'll be able to do that here. Of course, same um, as the 3D floor plan, we also have that zoom to center just to 
zoom us back out and see everything centered. Zoom in, zoom out. Next one here is draw. So if we want to do some sort of custom drawing, we can do that if we'd like to. We also have the undo button up here. Shapes. So tons of different shapes or rather options with them. We can do arrows. We can also do straight lines. Um, but when you've added a shape, you'll also be able to change out the color, make it transparent as well. So tons of different options to work with there. I'll go ahead and delete that. And then lastly, um, rulers here. So a couple of different style options for the rulers too. Um, but again, this is going to be a good way for you to add in measurements. So if you're trying to tell a client, you know, the measurement uh, from left to right is, um, you know, six feet, we can go ahead and add something like that in here. So awesome. This is the tools up on the left hand side. But of course, we have some information that we can play with over on the right. So there's a ton of different things over here. We have project items, which is going to be any items that we have clipped and we have associated with this living room. So if you remember when we were clipping that couch, we did link it to Ross's refresh. So it's here waiting for me. So if I wanna click on that, awesome, we can bring this couch straight away in. But if we are needing to add more items to this mood board and say they are items from our product library that we haven't linked to this project quite yet, we can simply just go over to our main library over here, and this is where we'll be able to see all of the products that we've ever clipped, uh, including our logo. So maybe we'll add our logo in right here, make that a little bit smaller, bring that up in one of the corners, uh, but cool. So we have our couch. Let's go ahead and just add in a rug because I wanna talk about some of the other options that we have with this too. So I'll go ahead and click onto this rug right here. And what you'll notice is by default, there's gonna be a bit of a layering effect happening. So the newest item that you add will always kind of be at the forefront. But if, if it needs to be behind an item, you'll always be able to click back or front, depending on where you want it to be. So this might be really relevant with things like a rug where you want to bring it into the image here and you want it to be maybe a little bit under the couch. So we'll, we'll make this a little bit larger here and we can sit that kind of under the rug. But maybe we want this to be a little bit more realistic. So one of the cool tools that we have here is skew. So I'm gonna actually bring this to the front so we can kind of look at it while I'm doing it here first. So we'll click skew here. And one, one kind of good way to do this is to bring kind of the back here a little bit closer and actually do the opposite on the front, kind of have this a little bit larger. And this is starting to skew the image to make it a little bit more realistic. I can go ahead and click OK if I'm content with that and now move it back behind the couch. So perfect. This looks way more realistic than it was previously. So awesome. We can continue to kind of go down the list here and start adding in products. And what you'll notice, too, is by default, the system is trying to clip the product for you and remove a lot of the background. So with this case, it actually did it quite nice. But if we wanted to click restore background, you'll kind of see what was there before. There's there's a gray tint behind that um, light. So I like it when it's removed. I'm going to click remove background again, just so we have that nice white color on the background. So excellent. We can continue to add in all of our products in here. It's already starting to fill up, but I'm no designer. <laughs> I can't bring things together and make it look nice. So I'm actually going to show you a quick demo of a completed version of a mood board so you can kind of get an idea. So we'll jump into this one right here. It's awesome. This has text in it. Um, this has all of our products in it, things are layered as well. You'll see the, the, the rug is behind some of these items. We're able to bring in you know, a plant and put it on top of the coffee table. So amazing. Same thing with this. We also do have some sharing options. So if we want to go ahead and print this, we can print it to a PDF. Um, and we can also click the share option right here to go ahead and share this out uh, standalone. But excellent, that's gonna be the demo of the mood boards here. So I will go ahead and kick it over to Katie. Great. Thank you. So I'm going to wrap up with our room planner, which is actually a great tool to wrap up with because it's really um, the culmination where you can add a lot of the design elements that we've been speaking to throughout this presentation. So the room planner is one of our newer features, and it's definitely a favorite. It combines a workspace along with a presentation feature, so you can take your design displays to the next level while also saving time and effort. So there are a few great features um, that we've heard from a lot of our designers that they really like and that they use all the time. 
So one component is that the room planner lets you work with your team to see how products at different price points will affect the overall budget. So you can add different products. For instance, if you want to put in a more expensive couch and a less expensive couch, and then through the budget tracker, you can see how each option will stack up against the overall budget. And then ultimately, your client can decide where they want to spend that money. It's also a really great way to streamline communication. So you can leave comments for your internal team on specific products within a room plan. And clients can also leave comments for you. So instead of you receiving multiple comments, either through your email or through text that are totally out of context, you can get comments right on specific products. And then you can make updates or take action on those as a way to keep the process moving along. And you can also choose what information you want your clients to see when you're sharing a room plan with them. So for instance, you can choose whether you want to make that budget tracker visible or whether you want to hide it. And you can also hide certain objects. So if you have a preference or you have a favorite option that you want to show to your client first, and then you have a backup option, you can hide that backup option the first time you share it with them so that they'll only see what you want them to see. And then you can always go back and change it or show them more options later. And if you also want your clients to only focus on certain aspects of the design, like which items might be waiting for approval, you can customize those viewing settings as well when you share it with them. So as I mentioned, the Room Planner is a really comprehensive tool. So you can add in images that you already have from your product library. You can add in an existing 3D floor plan or one of the mood boards that you've created for a specific room. You can also add in individual files and images to really make it a comprehensive source. So all of the design elements for the room will be kept in the same spot, and it's really easy for you and your clients to go back to and reference. You can also resize images within a room plan to highlight the products or items that you want the client to focus on. And the ones that they don't really need to focus on, you can make smaller. So it becomes a really useful presentation tool. So for instance, if you wanted to make your mood board the focal point, you can make that large and make some of the other products smaller. Or for instance, if you wanted to make the pillows larger, but maybe the pillow inserts, which aren't as interesting, a little smaller, you can do that as well. And then the room planner is also a great way to help streamline your workflow. So once you have approved products in a room plan, you can convert that directly into a proposal or an invoice, so you don't need to do any duplicate work. And then you can also share that with your clients through the client dashboard. As I said, they can always go back and reference it themselves. So one feature that we've heard from a lot of clients that they really love is being able to add those multiple products. So for instance, designer on Andrea Martosha said, she loves how in the room planner, you can add multiple products for clients to approve or decline. For instance, you can add a few lamp options that they can choose from, and then you can actually see them go in and approve or decline the lamp that they want. So she finds it to be a really amazing function to have in there. So now I'll hand it over to Cameron and he'll demo how you can actually use a room planner. Perfect, thank you so much. So let's talk about it. So right now, just so we know where I'm at inside of House Pro, I am actually inside of projects and I am in Ross's refresh under the room planner tab. And so from here, we can go ahead and click create new and add in additional rooms. I've already put together a living room room planner as well as a kitchen one here. So let's just jump into the living room and, and, and start building it out. So Right now it's completely empty. We need to get some content in here. But before we do that, let's just kind of talk about some of the tools that we see on the outside. So this eye information tool will pull up the room plan info itself. So if we want to change out the cover photo, we have a custom image that we want to attach to that. We can go ahead and do that. We can of course change the name of the room plan. Uh, we can see when it's last viewed was. If we have any team member accounts, team members that we've assigned this to, we can go ahead and assign it here or keep it as unassigned. And then of course, this is where we can come to keep a detailed record of the activity. So when it was created, uh, when we've sent it, things of that nature. Now over here, we also have the budget option. So we can click edit right here and we can add an overall room budget. So we can say the budget here is going to be $15,000. And I want to ensure that the tax as well as the shipping costs of the items that I'm adding in 
is going towards that budget. So that will continue to fill up as we add in items that get approved. And then we also have the convert button, which we're going to come back to in just a moment, but this is how we'll go ahead and convert a room planner into a document. So let's start filling this up. Over here on the right-hand side, we do have different ways and things that we can add to this room planner. So we, of course, have project items, library, three floor plans, mood boards, images, and files. So let's just talk a little bit about all of them. So project items. This, again, is going to be your essentially waiting room of all the products that you've been working with that already associate to this same room. So Ross's uh, living room here, this is the same kind of room that we've been working with from the beginning. So you'll notice that the, the product that we clipped is here ready for me to add in, um, as well as any of the items that I added to the mood board that we are working on. They're all right here waiting and ready as kind of quick grab and go access. So we can already bring all those products in, which is amazing. But of course, our library tool over here is all of our products, not just the ones that we've linked to this project already. So if I want to add in some additional items right here, I can continue to do that. So I might even add in a couple of different couches because uh, we're looking to kind of get some options here. So pulling everything in, we can bring in some services as well if we'd like to and assign images to that. I'll go ahead and close out of that for now. Uh, 3D floor plans, again, we can jump in here and we can add in floor plans. We can start a floor plan from right here. Um, and we can also add in uh, mood boards. So I'm actually going to bring in a mood board for this one here. So cool. We have our mood board that we created a little bit earlier. Images, if we have a, a custom file image that we're looking to bring in, uh, we can go ahead and add that. Same thing with files. If we would not want to quickly attach a file to this, we can. So. Cool, we've started filling up the room planner here with uh, various uh, items as well as the mood board. So let's start customizing it a little bit. So you'll see right off the bat that uh, we can, of course, change some of the sizes here. And in fact, maybe we want the mood board to be large. Uh, we want this to be a full size image and we want that to be up at the top. I don't even need to move it. Uh, it's, it's already at the top, I love that. Cool, now we can start customizing some of the other items here. So. Maybe I want to bring all the couches next to each other because we want to have them side by side for our client to view all as options. And maybe we want to do the same thing as well for some of the, the rugs here. Actually, maybe we want to have the pillow up there. So cool. Everything's looking a little bit more organized. We can also do a bit of a size adjustment here. Maybe I'm looking to highlight this exact couch. Um, so I might want that to be medium sized compared to the other two. I think that looks nice. So we'll go with it. So we're moving items around, we're resizing everything, but we also might want to change some of the info on some of the products themselves. So maybe I want to change the name of these products. So maybe this is meant to just be, you know, couch option one. And we can do the same thing for all the other ones. Couch option two. Oops, let's go back in here and delete. Excellent. And we can just continue couch option three. So if we want to change the name of these products, we can go ahead and do that. You can also just click on the product itself and the 360 view will pop up on the right hand side. So if we need to add more information right away to this product, we need to change some of the information on the client description. We need to change some of the information pertaining to uh, you know the dimensions, anything like that. We can just go through all of these tabs right here. We can adjust the unit cost, the selling cost for the client. We can adjust the markup here. So if you need to make adjustments to the products, this is going to be the way to do that. Um, but there's also other things that we can do with these products. So again, I've already mentioned that this might be the couch that I am kind of putting at the, the number one recommendation to my client. So maybe I wanna jump up here at the top and make it a little bit more obvious with a note. So if I click on this right here, there's a couple of different notes that we can do. We can do a client note but we can also do a team internal note that only myself and my team members would be able to see. I wanna send a client note here. So I'm gonna say, um, this is um, my number one option. Cool, so I can go ahead and submit that. When I send this to the client, they'll be able to see that as a note and give a comment back. So awesome. Uh, there are, of course, other things that we can do here. So again, if we click the item overview, it's 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 the same thing as clicking the middle of the, the, the product here. Our 360 view will pop up. 
If we click the link icon right here, what that's going to do is it's going to just bring us straight to the vendor website. That way you can just get quickly back to that item if you need to see if the pricing has changed since you've added it or you missed out on a detail, you can quickly get back to that product. And then finally here, the three dots was the last one. So again, this is where you'll come in to change the size. As Katie had mentioned, if you are looking to hide one of the, the products, you don't want it to be visible, this is where you'd click hide. So cool, that is now in the hidden items section. I'm gonna bring that back up here just so it's in. Uh, we can remove it here um, and we can just delete it from the project altogether. So awesome. We can continue to edit this room planner resize everything, change the order of everything, adjust the layout. What we want to do next is we might want to share this with our clients. So we can jump up here and click preview and share. And it's going to be branded with my business info, my logo automatically, the name of the room plan. So all is looking great. We do have the option to do a little bit of custom fine tuning for what our client can see right here at the top. So this is very important. Make sure you just quickly scan through this each time, viewing settings. Do we wanna show the total budget here, yes or no? Do we wanna show each item's individual pricing? How much information do we wanna give about the product? Do we wanna be showing you know, quantity? Do we wanna show the product descriptions, color, materials, dimensions, things like product links as well? Do we want our client to be able to see the link and go to the product? Um, there's going to be, you know, different options, uh, different ways to do it. So pick what aligns, you know, best with your business. And then finally for approvals, what do we want them to be able to approve and decline? Maybe we don't want them to be able to approve or uh, decline a mood board, but rather just visually see it. Same thing with floor plans and images and files. Maybe we only want them to see and approve products and services that we've added. Uh, so they'll be able to see all of these items right here. And since all of these, or rather these items were already approved, they are now kind of adding it to the budget, but the client will also be able to click approve or decline once you send it. So it's really up to you whether you're wanting to approve it on their behalf um, or you want them to approve it. And this is what that little note will look like for them. So they can click on that, they can see what my message was to them, and then they'd be able to add a comment back uh, just right there. So excellent. If this is ready to share out, you can click share and go ahead and send it out via email or copy a hyperlink and send that link out. Perfect, let me jump back over here to our room plans. The final thing to mention is if everything is approved and we're ready to move on to the next step, full circle, we're gonna come back to the convert option right here. We won't have to start a proposal from scratch. We can simply just bring in all the products that we know are approved. So we can click on the individual items that we wanna add in and not bring in the other ones. And we can go ahead and click convert items, thus saving us plenty of time. And another amazing feature, again, if we are wanting to see the activity of this, now that we've started to make some adjustments, we've started to add some items to this, uh, approve some of the items as well. Um, we can come back up to our eye information sim symbol and under the activity stream, we'll be able to see, again, a nice cohesive activity log of what's been happening. I've been approving items, I've been commenting on items, publishing it to the client dashboard and more. But cool, that about sums it up for the room planner demo. So I will go ahead and kick it back over to uh, Stefan to close us out. Thank you, Cameron, for your amazing and insightful demos. Thank you, Katie, for your support here today. And just to quickly summarize, today we covered House Pro Room Scanner with LiDAR technology, 3D floor planner, uh, life-size walkthroughs, House Pro product clipper and mood boards, and room planner. All of these features you can find on house.com slash pro and you can learn more about them in more depth um, through our tutorials on House Pro Learn. Thank you so much for your time today. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your customer support managers or our help center. Thank you so much. Bye.